Good morning, how are you? It's such a joy, it's such an honor to be with us this morning as we break uh, the bread of life. It's been a while and uh, I am glad that God has given me the opportunity to be here to break the bread of life with us this morning. I want to share something uh, briefly from the book of Psalm, Psalm 50. Eh? I will read and then we will share together. Um, Psalm 50, I'll begin uh, from verse 5. The Bible says, Gather to me these consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for he is a God of justice. Listen, my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, Israel. I am, I am God, your God. Bring, I bring no charges against you concerning your sacrifices or concerning your burnt offering, which are ever before me. I have no need of a boon uh, from your stone or gods from your pen. For every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountain, and the insects in the fields are mine. If, if I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world is mine, and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls, <laughs> or drink the blood of goats? Sacrifice thanks, uh, thank offerings to me. Fulfill your vows to the Most High, and call on unto me on the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will on, uh, and you will honor me. Uh, but to the wicked, the Lord says, "I have no right. Uh, what right have you to recite my laws or take my covenants on your lips? You hate instructions and cast uh, my words uh, my words behind you." This is my focus uh, from verse. Um, uh, from verse 7, listen my, people, uh, and, uh, listen, my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, Israel. I am your God, your God. I bring no charges against you concerning your sacrifices um, or concerning your burnt offerings, which are ever before me. I have no need of a boon. Uh, I have no need of a boon from your stone or gods from your, from your pens. So in this particular text, God is talking to the people of Israel and he's telling them, you know, uh, gather, gather together. I have something to speak against you. And he's saying, concerning the way you've been doing your rituals, your, uh, your, your, your burnt offering, your sacrifices, I have no charge against you. But God is, God is like, I, I, it's good you've been doing all these things, but remember, you know, I own a thousand cattle upon a hill, you know. Uh, I know every bird of the air. I know every beast. If I were really hungry, I would go for any of those because they are mine. And remember Psalm 24, the, the earth and all its fullness belongs to God. But God is telling them, nevertheless, you have abandoned one thing. And this is, he's telling them, my charge, my only charge against you is I would, I, would, I would wish that you, uh, you offer unto me the sacrifices of thanksgiving. You've been so good uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the, this sacrifice, the sins offering, uh, these other offerings as per the Old Testament. God is saying, you guys have been doing very well on that. As I was looking through this text, um, I reflected through, you know, the life, my life as a Christian, you know, how we do our things, yeah? And sometimes we, we, may, be, we, we may be caught up in the thought that the more, uh, the, more, the, more, the more I'm caught up in the service of God, the more I'm caught up in sacrificing before God, the more I'm caught up in whatever you call it, however you serve your God, whether uh, it's through... Uh, supporting the ministry, whether through praise and worship, through all those things, God is saying they are good and keep doing them. You know, they are not bad. But don't neglect this one area. And this one area is what? To the same extent that you bring these sacrifices, to the same extent, offer unto me sacrifices 
of thanksgiving. And you know, I'm also looking at this sacrifice. What does sacrifice entail? As, as long as it's a sacrifice, it's, it's painful, so to speak, you know? And I picture it that sometimes um, you, you, pick, you, you, you know, you, you, um, you, you so wish that life would be different, but it's not, you know? Uh, you've been in ministry and it's some prayer seems not to be, to be answered. But God is saying, in the midst of all that, offer unto me the sacrifices of thanksgiving. It will only become a sacrifice when it's not easy to do it. The moment you go an extra mile, it becomes a sacrifice. The moment you wake up and tell God, God, you are my God, despite and in spite everything happening around me, I give you praise, I give you honor, I give you thanksgiving, you are my father, you are my king. The moment we do that, God is saying you are, you are offering unto me these sacrifices of thanksgiving. But now watch out what the Lord promises. He promises and says, um, um, verse 15, And call unto me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you will honor me. God is saying, if you do this, if you focus on offering unto me these sacrifices of thanksgiving, you know, what, what I'm picking from this text is, let's be deliberate about thanksgiving. It's not a matter of how I'm feeling right now, but it's a function of I will do it because God requires it of me. And he says, if you do that, then what will I do? I will list, uh, you will call unto me and I will answer you. And on a particular day, he talks about the day of trouble. You know, and you know, I had someone explain that uh, in everyone's life, there is always the day of trouble. You wake up and everything seems not to be going right. It's the day of trouble. You wake up and you wish that you would go back to your mother's womb, you know, and this day would not find me. It was the day that Job, you know Brother Job in the Bible? It's the day that he lost everything. Bad news upon bad news upon bad news, you know. And I'm convinced all of us, in, in one ex to one extent or the other, in one way or the other, we experience some degree of the day of trouble. And God is saying, on the day of trouble, you know, on that day that you wake up and things are not just fine, call unto me and I will answer you. That is the promise he's given us from his word. I want to leave it there, but these are the take-homes. This is, this is the summary of what we are saying. What we are saying is, let's be deliberate about thanksgiving. Before you jump out of the bed this morning, just tell God, even, ca can we... Can we, can we take it a notch higher? Can we even thank God for the things that are not working? Can we thank him for the crossed doors, you know? Doors that are not opening up, you know? You've been applying for that job and it's not coming along, you know? And I, I, I'm, I'm persuaded that God knows if he really uh, needed to give you a job, like right now, it's just a matter of blinking and you have the job. But for his own reason, I can't tell why, but I'm saying, can we, can we change our tactics and say, Lord, I thank you for that door that has not opened up for me because I know you have good thoughts for me, plans to give me a future and a hope, plans to prosper me, plans to increase me in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, we honor you, we glorify you. Thank you for your faithfulness and thank you for your goodness. This morning, Lord, we are deliberate about giving you thanks. We are grateful that you've given us life. We are grateful that you've given us health. You've given us the breath. The breath that we are breathing this morning, it's about you. And we honor you for it, O oh God. Where we've, we've been slack as far as thanksgiving is concerned, we ask that you forgive us. We ask that you cleanse us in the name of Jesus. I, I, I commit my listener and my viewer before you this morning as they begin the day, as they give thanks unto you, Lord, may you prosper them in everything that they do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.